right, everybody, and welcome to the Touch of Gaming Podcast. This is episode number 131. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison, and joining me, Jared Schultz. Jared, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Lloyd? You know, I'm doing pretty good, too. I can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah, it's good to talk to you and have a show after last week's little... Yeah, so we uh, we got set to do a show, and um, it sounded like there was a small little jackhammer in your microphone. It was it was really bad. There was like ticking and banging and clunking. It was uh, it, it was bad. Um, so you, you're sporting a new headset. How, how do you like it? Um, I don't know well enough to, to say, <clears throat> but... Yeah, it's fine. You pulled it out of the packaging and put it right on your melon, and now we're doing a show. More or less, yeah. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, before we do, I just want to remind you guys that uh, we'd love to hear from you. Head on over to vgpodcast.com and click on forums at the top of the page to come join us in the VG Podcast forums. Uh, if you want to find out when we're doing these shows live, because we do do them live each and every week that we have a show, uh, you can find out more info either on vgpodcast.com slash live or follow us on Twitter, because I always tweet out when we're going live at the show. It's usually in the evenings in the central time zone in North America. So if you're up and, and want to watch a show uh, just keep watching your feed uh, Wednesday Thursdays and Fridays those are the tech te- or typically the the days that we do show here on the podcast network so uh, you can always look at the recording schedule again on vgpodcast.com slash live so follow us on Twitter I'm at Dazme Jared is at the quacko right that's what it is yep, still. that's right I, I keep I keep saying things and then I have to verify that they're right because I do I, I don't have your uh, your uh, Twitter ID on the screen right now, which is kind of I odd. keep checking to try and get at just at Quacko. And it's owned by like some girl who has tweeted like once like over a year ago. It just makes <laughs> me sad. Why don't you you could petition Twitter to get your uh, your your name back from, yeah. from a dead account. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sad. Makes me sad. Cool. One day. Well what do you say we get into the show? Sounds great. Jared, what have you been playing? I have been playing all sorts of good stuff, Lloyd. Which is uh, good. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Yeah. Yep. So uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about Heroes and Castles. Heroes and Castles is kind of a, a tower defense, castle defense type of game. Um, it's actually by Forsaken Media. Um, not sure what you might know them for. Bug Heroes they did. Uh, they've done a lot of things. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You when you buy the game you get three characters and they play each a little different. You get like a a dwarf guy that shoots guns and the idea is that you're trying to build your defenses and at the same time you also have the a fairly strong character and there's just undead hordes coming to knock down your castle. So it's not really a very original idea. However, it is very cool in the implementation and kind of the graphics because you you play like uh, like an over the shoulder type um, point of view from it. Really cool. Um, I did end up spending a couple of dollars on it for in app purchases because they have both in app purchases as well as playing or you know being able to just normal earn stuff. Right. It's all the same currency you get gems. I just wanted to unlock some of the other characters. And then for some reason, if you tap them a second time, uh, they'll change and then they get names. So the paladin might turn into, you know, Lloyd. That's not real, but I'm just making <laughs> it up. And that's a fine I name thought, for a paladin. Yes. And I thought, Hey, this is really cool. You know, maybe I'll go ahead and take care or grab this guy and, and make it a little bit stronger. And uh, I, I thought it was like a powered up version of the Paladin, but it's actually just um, not. It's just a different skin. And uh, so I felt really dumb because I spent currency, my hard earned currency, on just another skin. Um, so be aware of that. But uh, overall, pretty good game. Really enjoying it. You know, at the very first, you're trying to build the mines to get your, you know, money coming so that then you can build lots of pikemen and and archers and different towers, turrets that you can put on there and upgrade your walls. Really cool game. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's $1.99. I'll probably be reviewing it here in a couple of weeks. 
there's a total of six characters, so three are unlocked just with the game, and the, the additional three you have to pay for uh, with the currency. Like I said, you do earn it, but you don't earn it super fast. And so I did drop another $2 on crystals there to, to play the game. And I do like it. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, hmm. And yeah, like I said, I'll probably end up reviewing it again in another show or two. So then I've been playing Block Fortress. And actually, funny enough, Block Fortress is by the same team, by Forsaken Media. Um, and it is kind of a tower defense game mixed with minecraft yeah it's it's strange i've i've i played it a little bit as well and it's it's very bizarre um yeah not, not in a so, bad way it's just it's a weird blending that i didn't think would work but it seems to kind of kind of work kind of kind of works yeah. yeah i'm not a huge <laughs> fan of it to be honest with you and maybe it's because i don't get into minecraft games a lot right um but I did, I did like blockheads. So I, I'm not completely against the genre. But mm. basically, you're you're building some mines. You also have to build some food so that that you can eat food and power up your guys in between waves. And then you have a little barracks, and you're defending the barracks. And there's a whole crafting system, and that you can go and upgrade your different things. Um, and yeah, I it has a pretty steep learning curve, in my opinion. And maybe that's where I'm getting stuck a little bit. Uh, it might be useful if you're interested in it to go and look at different forums and maybe some how-to type videos type, just because otherwise, it's it's pretty daunting. At least that was my take on it. Was that kind of the vibe you got? Yeah, I I I didn't really understand how to play it the first couple times. Like I I would try and it's like build your level, so I would build like a little castle type thing, and then it would say, okay, well hit this to start the battle. Then the battle would come, and it's like. Oh, I guess I didn't put turrets, or I didn't power the turrets, and it, it took a while to figure out that uh, you have to do lots of stuff before you yeah. start the round. Um, I, I've seen some, I've watched some videos online, and some people are pretty, uh, pretty interesting um, and and very very good at what they do um, as far as this game is concerned. Um, I I wasn't thinking that way when I was playing it, so maybe I gotta give it another couple chances. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at. I need to give it another chance. I didn't like it a ton my first try, uh, so we'll see. Um, then I've been playing a game called Aeon Avenger. Aeon Avenger is a Japanese role-playing game. It feels like it's modeled after the N64 version, uh, or not N64, Super Nintendo Japanese role-playing games. It has some time travel in it, kind of you know Chrono Trigger-esque. It's cool. Uh, still getting into it. Um, yeah, I'll have more information about it. It it feels kind of blocky and and that type of thing, but but I do like it. Um, and then finally, I have been playing. Oh, not finally. I have two more. Pawn. So Pawn is a little simple like puzzle type game. And Pwn. Sorry, right? Is that how you say it? <laughs> yeah. Pwn, P-W-N, and it it's it kind of is what you imagined hacking to be if in like the late '80s. There's you versus another hacker, and you're trying to take over nodes. And all you do to take over the node is actually touch it, and you get bonuses for taking over nodes that you're connected to in two different ways. And then there's a whole bunch of extra power ups that you get to use, and you're trying to take care of them at the same time as uh, as you're doing everything else. And honestly, I, I didn't really find it that interesting. Um, I was really excited about it, but it's, uh, it's a game. <laughs> 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 and then finally, <coughs> sorry about that. I've been playing Megapolis and Megapolis, uh, is, I was trying to fill, the hole in my life that is not having a freemium game currently to play. Right. Uh, and, and so I keep giving games tries and so far nothing has stuck. Um, so Megapolis is my current attempt to do that. Basically it's kind of a, it, it actually makes me feel more SimCity than like SimCity games have lately. Hmm. So you're trying to balance your power and your water to your city and you take contracts, and those contracts pay out Farmville style. And 
you know, you level up so that you have more buildings available to you and you give your friends gifts and you get friends on there. I don't know if it's going to stick or not. Uh, probably haven't played it enough, but uh, we'll see because, yeah, I, I haven't had a, a nice freemium game that I can check into for kind of a while now. So anyway, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Kind of a long list, but it has been two weeks since we talked. So <clears throat> It has. I, I have not played as many games as you, Jared. Um, I have been... That's because you've been busy with other things. I have. I've been playing lots of stuff on my 3DS, lots of stuff on my Wii U. Um, Lego City Undercover is really great. If you have a Wii U, you need to buy that game. Um, just we'll, we'll talk more about that on, on the bonus stage uh, really, really, really soon, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, but I haven't played some other games. Um, I'm still playing The Simpsons. That's my freemium game that I keep uh, kind of, um, I don't know, going to... Um, constantly um they just added a patch today uh the level 27 patch came <clears throat> with uh level 27 content so you can finally unlock uh lenny and carl <laughs> in the game and uh, some other stuff as well so i've been um starting that quest line off and they've been doing something lately where they're tying in a lot of patches um in, in um I, I guess in tune to the the episode of simpsons that is airing um, so last week's on Sunday, you had um, the Fruit Bat, Fruit Batman, uh, where Mr. Burns dressed up as uh, Fruit Batman, and you had a Fruit Batman um, light that you could uh, you would get for free just if you played the game between like Wednesday and Sunday of last week, and some other stuff like that. So kind of really digging that. That's really kind of cool. So that's kind of my two to go thing. And um, now that it, it's actually um, working and and running really well. Um, <clears throat> playing that um also playing R ridiculous fishing a lot i'll be reviewing that one in this episode so i won't mention too much about that now um did check out super stickman golf 2 because that came out uh, last week as well um for 99 cents and i'm really quite enjoying it um i like the i love the first ridiculous golf or super sorry super stickman golf getting my games mixed up here um but this one seems to be better in all areas so that's always a good thing from a sequel and um also playing <clears throat> excuse me uh rock bandits adventure time it's uh, an adventure time kind of side scrolling um i don't know gesture based um platformer where you're collecting items and then using those items to forge um i don't know parts of your weapon so um that's been a lot of fun um been playing or watching a, a lot of adventure time with my kids so that is the reason why um, I wanted to uh, pick this one up and uh, the kids are playing it as well and they're really enjoying it. But uh, that's pretty much about it. Um, I haven't been playing too much more uh, other than those uh, those few games. Sounds good. <clears throat> All right, what do you say we get into the rest of the show while I can still talk? <laughs> My voice Sounds is good. fading fast, man. Uh, let's get into notable releases. So last week we had a couple games that we didn't get to tell you about while they came out. Um, so I thought I'd mention them here. Uh, Night Sky... Uh, was finally released on the App Store. This game has been cloned in numerous times, but uh, the the real Nicholas uh, release of Night Sky is out for ninety nine cents. So check that one out. Uh, Ridiculous Fishing is out for three dollars. Um, I'll be reviewing that one in a little bit. So um, just wait to hear my review before you go buy it. Actually, no, go buy it now because you're gonna want to buy it. You're gonna want to own it if you don't already. Uh, Super Stickman Golf Two, as I said, is ninety nine cents. And uh, this week we had a interesting release. Uh, called Order and Chaos Duels. Uh, it's a card battle game from the Order and Chaos folk at, over at Gameloft. And it's free. Um, so I've downloaded it. I haven't had a chance to check it yet. So I'm going to try to do that over the next few days to uh, to uh, to see um, what, uh, what, uh, what, what happens with that one. Because it looks like it could be interesting. So just to clarify here, this is not a card battler though. It is more of like the trading card game, deck builder type game. Okay, so it's like a Magic so, the Gathering type thing? Yeah, or, you know, there's another one, what was it called? That got pretty big for a while there, Shadow Era. Right. Yeah, it's more like that, just to, to throw that out there. Because um, I heard Card Battler, and I get immediately turned off when I hear that. <laughs> And then I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, this is not a card battler. This is, you know, one of those trading card collectible card games. So right. um, I'll also probably be looking at it. Cool. 
Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely uh, mention more about that in uh, the coming weeks. All right, let's get into the news. Uh, first, Blockhead's got a huge update. Have you checked it out at all, Jared? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <clears throat> the, looks like a couple of key things there is, first of all, that the time passes when the app is closed. That's huge. Um, that's a, a huge, huge, huge thing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's really cool because you can go give them a chain of events, especially early on when you don't have a lot of guys to worry about. <laughs> Um, you can go give them a bunch of things to do and then you can leave the game and come back and it'll be done, which is great. Uh, additionally, it looks like you can now have a fourth blockhead to build your thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't quite have the resources for a fourth blockhead yet, so I'll probably have to go pick that game up and get some extra stuff. And then the other third thing is the tinfoil hat. And so you can craft tinfoil hats and if you give tinfoil hats to your characters then they go and, and basically just kind of collect resources on their own, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, now, they, I'm uh, not sure they, if I'd like they that. They develop a mind of their own is what the developer says. Yeah, so I, I was kind of thinking about whether or not I would like that because, you know, if you find the crystals, that's premium currency, you want to always make sure you get that with the best picks and stuff like that. And I would just be worried that they might ruin some of that. But at the same time, if they're actually doing stuff and you come back and have a whole bunch of you know resources, I guess I wouldn't complain too much. So, mm -hmm. uh, Have you went and logged in and checked it um, out? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I played the hell out of Blockheads when it first came out, um, and I've, I've not found the urge to go back and, and revisit all this content. I think I'm going to wait till a couple more patches come, and then I'm going to go and kind of bl blaze my way through it again like I did the first time. Um, but it was... Um, yeah, it, it, this update looks really good. There's sharks, there's um, fishing, there's, uh, if you kill a shark, sometimes there's going to be um, unique clothing in it. There's a whole bunch of really cool updates that I'm really looking forward to checking out. So um, if you've not played Blockheads, definitely go pick it up. It's uh, it's a really great uh, 2D Minecraft kind of game. Yeah, and it's always great when you hear that they're being responsive to the community and making little you know, tweaks and changes here based on people's feedback. Yeah, exactly. No, it's very, very cool. All right, moving on. Uh, next up, um, it's not really game related, but I know a lot of people uh, are listening to this podcast on their portable device. Well, um, Apple has updated its podcast app finally. Um, they've fixed some bugs. They've um, done some other things to make it work uh, a lot nicer. And they've also... Um, um, they've also re removed that crazy reel-to-reel -reel kind of skewmorphism that they had going with the app. Um, the, the app allows you to create your own playlist this time, um, which is really, really great. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if anybody out there is using it because it was getting pretty well blasted on um, on comments, on reviews, on the forums, on podcasts, on everywhere. Um, it's probably the most hated Apple app that has ever been released. Um, it looks like a really nice update. So if you haven't already, uh, do check out that update. Um, yeah, that skewmorphism was just it. Just in that place, especially, it just looks so outdated and ridiculous. So it's good to see it go. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, moving on. Um, if you, we've talked a lot. <laughs> we talked a lot about Square Enix, and um, we've we've talked about how their pricing is kind of bizarre. Well, um, they're doing a sale right now, which is rare and kind of um, un unheard of. They've done it a few times before, but not not very often. And that is, um, you can pick up pretty much all uh, of the Final Fantasy games, the first four, for some pretty good prices. So Final Fantasy, the original, uh, used to be $9, is now 4 Final Fantasy 2 was 9 and now is 4 Final Fantasy 3 was 16 and now is 9 <laughs> Final Fantasy 3 for iPad was 17 and now is 10 uh, because it's $1 more expensive to make a game for the iPad, apparently. And Final Fantasy 4 was 16 is now on for $11. So... Th th those aren't really sales in many many parts of the world but uh that is a square unix sale so if you've been holding off um and and you want to get yourself some final fantasy on your ios device um now will probably be the cheapest way that uh, you can possibly do that so yeah <laughs> i I've, i picked up final fantasy 4 because it is my favorite final fantasy and i've been playing that one for a while and it's great um but 16 dollars was a lot of money for an ios uh, application yeah, they actually announced Final Fantasy V is coming out. Yeah. Currently, it's only in Japan, but there's a lot of people 
wondering if the sale means that it's also going to be coming out here. So, you know, watch for that next week. Um, I personally, I went and played through one again, uh, went and bought it on the App Store and played through it, and I just really remembered how far the the uh, the genre has come. Yeah. Just, you know, there's a couple of things that were so random. Um, so it's it's just been really interesting. And then I went and picked up two, and I figured that after I picked up two, then I would wait for the next, or played through two, I would then, you know, on the next sale. Because it seems like they do sales whenever they bring out a new game. So yeah, yeah. Um, you can pretty much count on a sale. And if you aren't getting it on a sale, you should not be buying these games because they cost way too much. And Square Enix is insane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they are. All right, moving on. Uh, this is for all my fellow Canadians out there. Uh, yet another free-to-play game has launched first in Canada. Um, this is by uh, Firaxis, um, being published by Two K Games. So um, they're they, they're the company that made uh, Civilization, which is maybe a, a very popular game. People might have heard of that game. Um, it's kind of sold a lot of copies. Um, so when Firaxis is basically um, and announcing that they're coming out with a game. It's like, holy crap, this is going to be awesome. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Uh, it's a game called Haunted Hollow, and it is a freemium, um, I guess, mansion building strategy game. It, it looks so bizarre. Um, I haven't checked it out yet. I, I just saw that it came out, um, so I've downloaded it, um, and it's ready for me on my iPad right now. So I'm going to start playing through that one. But yeah, the the, the the make the inventor of civilization and the publisher of like many awesome titles comes out with a haunted hotel maker freemium game. I, I don't know. Is it like maybe like a tiny towers kind of thing? I don't know. It's hard to tell by the screenshots, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely check it out and, and report back to you. But uh, I wanted to make mention uh, to everybody cause it just um, the news about this game launching just came out a, a couple hours before we started doing the show. Yeah, you'll have to let me know how, know how it is because I was actually really interested because I really like what Firaxis does, you know, and so I was, I'm hopeful that it's interesting because I really like strategy games. Yeah. And if it's any good, you know, I can go fire up my fake Canadian account and snag it. <laughs> Your wannabe Canadian account. You have to eat my bacon. My wannabe Canadian account. You have to eat bacon and smell some, some uh, I don't know, some maple syrup while you do that. Otherwise, you're they'll, they'll detect it that you're not a real Canadian. Yeah, and eat poutine at the same time. That's right, eat poutine at the same time as well. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That's enough for news and Canada, and Canada bashing. Let's get into the reviews for this week. Uh, how about I start off with um, a review since I'm going to be doing two. I'm going to talk about a game um, called Ridiculous Fishing. It's uh, $3 on the App Store, and it's by Vlambeer, and it is awesome. Um, it is amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, this game was basically... Um, uh, there was a, a game that came out a while ago called um, Ninja Fishing, where I, I played it and I was like, oh, this game's awesome. So you, you set your hook, you drop it down, it, it uh, sinks down in the water, you have to avoid all the fish. And then once you get to the um, to the bottom of your line or you hit a fish, then the, the hook goes up and you have to catch as many fish as possible. And then when you got to the top, um, you're, you're, you'd be able to just swipe and slice the fish using kind of a... Um, I don't know, a fruit ninja kind of um, a motion. And it was, a, it was a lot of fun. And then shortly after um, picking it up and playing it for a while, I found out that it was actually um, kind of a, a ripoff of a game that was released um, as uh, a, like a, a freemium download uh, or a free download rather called Ridiculous Fishing. Or I think it was called Awesome Fishing at the time or something or Amazing Fishing, some other name. Um, so when I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, well, what, what, what's going to happen? Uh, and this was like a year ago, so it's been a while coming. Well, Vlambeer finally came out with um, what they're calling Ridiculous Fishing now, and it, it's worth the wait. Um, this game is uh, really, really addictive. Um, uh, Ninja Fishing was addictive. This is way more addictive. So the game loop basically revolves around you setting your, your hook dropping it down, trying to get as far down as you can, um, collecting fish on the way up. Um, you have to get all of the uh, fish that you can. You need to unlock a, or you need to catch a certain number of unique fish, um, which then will unlock other areas, which allow you to go deeper. 
um, when when you set set the fish or when you catch the fish on the way up, um, instead of slicing them like your fruit ninja, you you instead shoot them with with guns and other uh, implements of doom, which is uh, a lot of fun and very satisfying as well. Uh, they fly into little uh, chum bits, and uh, you get dollars for for that. Then you use that money to buy upgrades. You can buy things like. Um, longer lines, um, weights, um, you can buy clothing, uh, you can buy lights so you can fish in, in deep, deep sea and other things like that. And that's basically it. That That's the game, but it is so um, addictive. I, I couldn't stop playing this game. And I've played it on both the iPhone, because I have an iPhone 5, um, uh, which I just got, by the way, uh, upgraded my iPhone 4 to iPhone 5, and it plays really, really well on the iPhone 5. And also played it on my iPad. Don't like it on the iPad because you're tilting to move your your hook bet left and right, and it seems kind of, I don't know, doesn't doesn't seem like it it plays really well on the iPad. But on the iPhone, it's like the perfect iPhone game. Um, as you play through the game, it unlocks. Um, damn it, Washington just scored again. <laughs> so my phone is going to explode in a few seconds with all the people screaming. Damn. Um, so yeah, you unlock four different areas that you can fish in, and each of those has different fish. Um, and then uh, they each are a little bit more lucrative as well. You get more money for the fish as as that happens. So um, that's pretty much the game. It's uh, super addictive. The art style is is really unique. It has like this angular art style. Um, which is really fun. The music is great. Uh, you play a track while your hook's on the way down, and then when you hook a fish, it kind of like blends into something else, and then that music track gets played in reverse as you go back up. Um, just some really great effects. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about the game other than you need to have this one. Everybody that has has an iPhone should have this game on their phone. It's it's that good and that accessible. Pretty much anybody can play and enjoy it. So um, I'm giving Ridiculous Fishing a five out of five. It's a, it's a game that you need to have on your iPhone. So uh, so go download it. It is very very good. So Ridiculous Fishing from Vlambeer, five out of five. Jared, what do you have up for yeah, us? Yeah, Vlambeer is the same guys that did like a super crate box. That's right. So. Exactly. Yeah, so it's interesting. I've thought about buying it. I, <clears throat> it seems like it's been getting some mixed reviews because some people are basically calling or saying that it doesn't have that much like game to it. So it'll be interesting. Yep. So uh, do you have a review up? Uh, yeah, I'm pulling it up. Sorry. <laughs> so my review today is going to be a game called Magic Orbs. And that's with orbs with the Z, um, because that's how you write orbs. So Magic Orbs is an Arkanoid or a breakout style game in which there is a ball and you have a paddle. And your primary job is to hit the ball with your paddle and have it bounce off of all the different walls and you know clear the level, basically. So it's pretty simple. However, this one has a really cool 3D implementation on it. Uh, basically, you're hitting an entire scene, and there's a, a variety of different scenes. And so you have like 10 levels on each, and there's five different sets. So there's um, that you start off with pirates, so you get like pirate scenes, and then you go to shark, which is more like underwater, and then shaman, so you get like some some crazy like. I don't know, shaman scenes? I don't know. And then tiger, so you get jungle scenes. And then Santa, which has some, like, winter scenes. And they do get progressively harder. And there's, like, a 3D world. So w whenever you play these type of games, there's often a different color of block. And that block you have to hit several times so that it, you know, and often it will change colors until it then uh, disappears. So the way that they do this with this one is, for example, there's a tree, and you hit the bottom of the tree, and the bottom of the tree disappears, and then the rest of the tree falls down one. So since it's a 3D image, they're able to do this, and it, it kind of feels... Uh, it, it, I, I don't know. I really like the way that they do this. Uh, Lloyd said that on his iPhone 4, he was having some performance issues with this game. So it may be one that you need to avoid unless you have a a more recent uh, processor in your your device, probably 4S um, 
iPhone 5 or iPod Touch uh, 5. And it's really cool because you slowly work that. There's lots of different power-ups. There's, you know, the typical slow the ball downs. And then there's also ones that hurt you, like speed the ball up. Or the worst is crazy ball. And all of a sudden the ball will just curve and it's really hard to hit and keep up. And you, the game controls uh, how each one of two ways, both of which work really well. You can either use your finger and kind of slide it along the bottom, or there's two buttons on the side if you want to, you know, just move the the ball left or the paddle left or paddle right. It's it's simple, but it looks really good. Um, whenever you're destroying it, occasionally, especially near the end of the level coins will drop you get collect five coins and that's how you can perfect each level um and it's just it's really a cool little game for 99 cents if you're looking at if you enjoyed those arkanoid or those breakout ones then it's a fantastic uh, version of it there are 50 levels so you get a pretty good value especially considering it's 99 cents and uh, yeah, so that's Magic Orbs, and I'm going to give it a four out of five. They didn't do anything for me to necessarily completely stand out, uh, but I did think it was a solid all-around package and a, a good game to have. I know that sometimes, you know, maybe I'll be waiting for something to happen at work, like run a macro or something like that. And uh, yeah, it's really great to just play a quick round while something's going. You know, because it probably takes only two or three minutes. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. Cool. Um, I, I did play this game as well, as you said, and I did play it on my both my iPad 3 and my iPhone 4, and I had some serious, um, I don't know, some serious performance issues where things would just, like, freeze, and it, it would freeze to the point where um, everything on the screen is frozen, but apparently the routine that was moving the ball wouldn't freeze but the ball would freeze. <laughs> so when everything became unstuck, the ball was like in some other area. It was either it like it either went all the way to the bottom or it was near my paddle. And that happened repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And um, I had to stop playing it because of that. Um, maybe with my new phone, I'll have to uh, give it another shot. What did you say that you were playing it on? Um, my iPad 3 and my iPhone 4. See, that's really weird because my wife was playing it on an iPad 2 and has not reported that at all. And I have not had that on my iPod 5. Weird. So with the fact that they, she wasn't having issues on the <laughs> iPad 2, that's a little strange. Hmm. So, hmm. Interesting. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to check it out again. All right, moving on. Um, let's get into my second review. I'm going to review a game called Dungeon Plunder. Um this is an, a really interesting app. It's by uh, Dominic Duchesne, um, a fellow Canadian, actually, which is kind of neat. Uh, this game is three bucks on the App Store, um, and um, we we actually chatted a, a little bit about it um, in our forums, uh, which is where I found out about that. Um, and now, um, um, I, I I or now or then, I guess <laughs> I decided to check it out. Um, the developer actually came by our forums and was chatting a little bit about it as well, which was kind of cool. So um, this game is a roguelike. So you're exploring a randomly generated world. And uh, when you die, uh, that's it. You're dead. You have to start over at the scratch um, at, at the start of the world and and uh, and do it again. Um, th this is this game is really interesting where it takes roguelike and it adds a combat system that is like playing roulette um so when you get to an enemy and you attack him you get a um you get a roulette wheel that pops up and depending on the character class that you that you are you can be either a warrior a mage or a rogue um you get different symbols that appear on the the different um, um reels in the roulette simulator and um they do different things so if you're the mage for example there'll be um, mana potions and shields and uh, wands so the mana potions fill up your mana which is um, triggers a special attack um, your if, if you have a shield it doesn't attack if you get shield or sorry if you get if you have a wand it doesn't attack if you get a shield it gives you um, like defense and you basically have to make combos and combos will give you um, bonuses so if you get three shields you get more um, bonus um, armor than if you just had two shields for example so 
um, pretty pretty simple stuff. Um, where the game gets really deep is <clears throat> as you're going through the world, uh, you level up, you um, you gain levels, um, you get money from killing enemies as well, and there's a full equipment system. So you are um, upgrading your equipment as you go through, trying to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, each of the classes also has three special moves as well that get unlocked as you level up as well. Um, once you get to level five, you can start, um, the game at any time at level three, which is really nice. And when you die, you don't just, um, come up empty handed. You carry over a certain percentage of the gold that you have, um, on your character, um, uh, to the next time that you play. And you also can bring special items. There's, um, a, a life, um, a scroll, which will instantly restore all of your uh, health. Um, you can bring a random number of those on your next mission. And then there's also equipment um, um, that you can unlock that don't really show on your character that um, persists between all of your plays. So as um, I'm going to pull up my, my game right now on my iPad because I've been playing on the iPad. And as you are playing um, and, and you do well with your characters, you'll start unlocking these um, these um, things, which uh, they're called runes in the game, and they give you bonuses. So I have currently I have um, four minor runes, one intermediate rune, um, and that's it. So I've I've played uh, enough to unlock those. So I have a rune of power, rune of defense, rune of wealth, and rune of immortality on my character. So every time I start a new game, I get plus twenty five percent chance of a life scroll dropping, uh, fifteen percent chance of or 50% more gold found as I'm finding gold. Um, uh, I get 5% more armor and 5% more damage on, on all my characters. And these persist across all of your uh, characters. So the more you play, the more you unlock, the, the better you get, the deeper you can go, the more you unlock, the more you get, the, the more you level up, the deeper you go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You keep going and, and playing through the loop that way. Um, it's... Uh, this game is really fun. I did not know what to um, what to expect when I when I picked it up. Um, I'm really glad I did pick it up. Um, I picked it up when it was a dollar ninety nine. It's now two ninety nine. Um, the developer has some weird in app purchases where you can buy uh, models, um, which basically gives you different skins for your characters, and that's it. They don't do anything different. And um, then there's also a tip jar where you can actually tip them a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, or ten dollars, and that's all it does is it it basically in-app purchases money away from your account and into his account. So I don't know about that, but um, the rest of the game itself is um, is a lot of fun. So if you're looking for a, a kind of an interesting little RPG. Um, with a roguelike, um, I, I don't know, underpinnings. Um, I don't think there's been many like that, except for maybe like a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon or something like that, which is like a heavy RPG game with um, roguelike kind of uh, mechanics. Um, Dungeon Plunder is definitely a fun game to to check out. I've been enjoying it a lot. It's uh, kind of my, I have a few minutes to kill. I'll go play uh, a few battles in uh, Dungeon Plunder and then go about uh, the rest of uh, my day. So uh, definitely check that one out. So Dungeon Plunder, $3 on the App Store. I give it a 4 out of 5. It's uh, about the only thing that I can really criticize it is it, it uses um, kind of a, a, an isometric 3D view of um of the the world um but it's using like kind of really really old school sprites for the world like it looks really really dated um um and the controls are a little bit odd where um to move your character you're tapping in different corners of your ipad it'd be nice if you could uh, maybe have a, a virtual control would pop up on the screen or something like that uh, just to make um your movement a little bit more um i don't know um, predictable, I guess would be the word. Um, other than that, I mean, the game, the game is great. There's a lot of strategy. Um, when you get past like level five, uh, that's when the game gets really hard and you have to kind of plan out your moves, uh, because since it's random, since you're playing roulette, um, there's a very good chance that you, you just won't get any damage and then boom, you're, you're done <laughs> and you have to start off at level one again or level three, if you've gotten to level five before. So anyway, Dungeon Plunder by Dominic Duchesne, uh, three dollars in the App Store, and it gets a four out of five from me. All right, man. <clears throat> I think that's gonna about do it for the show. Do you have anything else to add before we close her up? 
I don't think so. No, you don't think so. I'm going to turn your mic up a little bit. Yeah, it was uh, it was a great show, Jared. Thanks for for joining me. We want to hear from you guys. Head on over to vgpodcasts.com and uh, click contact us at the top of the page uh, to email us. You can email us directly at vgpodcasts at gmail.com. Join our forums, please, over at uh, vgpodcasts.com. Just click forums at the top or call a voicemail line, um, which um, we get voicemails and we'll play them in future episodes of the podcast. And you can do that by calling area code 505 VG Podcasts on your phone. You get free long distance phone calls in the Facebook app, in Gmail. So there's no excuse not to call because it's not going to cost you one red penny. All right, man. Thanks, Jared, for joining me yet again. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys in a, in a week's time. Uh, take it easy. Later. Bye. <laughs> I was waiting for that.